Hey guys, okay, welcome to science today. We're actually gonna combine 5.1 and 5.2 since um, I canceled the 5.1 the other day. Um, I'm not trying to give you more work for canceling it, like haha, it was a trap. <laughs> but what happened was is I saw how short 5.1 is. It's just a quick introductory section and then 5.2 really gets into the meat. And so it doesn't really make any sense to start 5.1 to introduce what's going on and then leave you 5.2 until next week, you know, um, because there's not too much information in 5.1. But I do wanna walk you through a few things um, in both the sections to make sure that you do understand them and you're not just blindly going through them, okay? So go over to page 114 in your science book. 114, okay. So we're in chapter five now about energy, okay? Energy is a very abstract co concept because you can't see energy, right? You can see the effects of energy, but you can't see it like mass or something like that, right? So, um, or matter, which are basically the same thing, right? But um, it's it's very important that you understand a little bit about it, even just the, the basic information, because what you need to understand is that everything on earth takes energy even if you don't see it even if you don't see the effects of it energy is being used okay so i'm gonna actually do some reading with you guys today some um some just basic information so that i can give you the jump start on where you need to go and what you need to be understanding okay so let's look at the key concepts on the green part we're going to be learning the units of energy which are the exact units of work does anybody remember what the units of work are joules okay joules so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you an opportunity for the 5.1 tell you what you're looking for and then i'm going to start talking you through some of these things which means that i'm going to be giving you some of your answers okay we're going to be talking about energy transfers meaning that um god has created all of the energy on the earth okay we're not getting any more energy it's just that the energy changes forms okay that's what a lot of the scientists studied for a long time to figure out that man cannot create nor destroy energy <coughs> which talks a lot about the power of god okay that whatever he gave us on earth is what we got to use we can't get any more of it but we can change the forms okay we're going to be talking about the conservation of energy the types of kinetic energy and potential energy and fundamental forces okay when you see the word kinetic you should always think of motion okay just get that in your head kinetic means motion and that's going to help you a lot to understand some of these physics concepts look at the key um symbols and abbreviations that's going to be helpful to know before you go into this lesson j is for joule that's the unit of work that's unit of energy e is energy m is mass c is light anybody see what equation we might be studying then of albert einstein if we are learning about these abbreviations e equals mc squared you're going to get into it just a little bit today um v is speed or velocity right or rate is what we call it in um in math class Okay, and then G is the strength of a gravitational field. And you won't actually get into that until 5.3 because it's not gonna be in today's thing for G, okay? So here you go. What you're gonna be looking for in 5.1 is you're gonna give me two sentences on what energy is and the SI unit for energy. Super, super basic information and I'm gonna tell it to you, okay? Um, then you're gonna give me the four sentences on the forms of energy. That's gonna be on page 115. That's kinetic energy, potential energy, mechanical energy, and non-mechanical energy. That's why there's four sentences because even though non-mechanical energy is not bold, it is important for you to know about, okay? Then you're gonna give me um, just two sentences on energy changes. I really just want you to be able to clarify what the first sentence is saying because it's basically a principle of, uh, of science. And then you're going to finish the rest of the chapter, the rest of the section, pardon, telling me about the law of conservation of mass and energy. The law of conservation of mass and energy. Give me four sentences on that. And give me two sentences on how the formula of E equals MC square relates to how the atomic bomb works. Okay. This was cool when I was reading this. Okay, you're not gonna get this like 100% understanding. You're not gonna be able to like go to anybody and say like, I totally understand how the atomic bomb works from this, but you are gonna see how the formula that Albert Einstein came up with, the theory basically that Albert Einstein came up with relates directly to the atomic bomb, which makes a lot of sense because he was involved in making the atomic bomb. Okay, 
and how it gave the base of it working. Now, in order to understand the atomic bomb completely, you also have to mix the chemical side of it. So we've studied that in chemistry a couple years ago. So I'm not asking you to gather a whole understanding of the atomic bomb, okay? Because it is a little mind blowing, but you're gonna know at least the physics side of it in two sentences. The reason why I'm asking you for two sentences is because it's very possible that's like all you're gonna be able to agarrar. I was like so excited about learning about it and then I tried to tell Brian and I like only could get like very basic information out because it's still a little complex, okay? I was gonna look for a YouTube video on it, but honestly the YouTube videos just take it a little bit too far about how the what each of the parts of the equation mean and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not um, where we're at on an uh, entry, le entry level physics class. But if you wanna look up a YouTube video to get your two sentences to help you, that's totally fine. But it has to correlate to that equation, okay? I'm gonna know if you totally ignore the book. The book has a lot of information, don't just press the arrow, okay? So that's what you're gonna do for 5.1. Um, plus do your concept review, including your application part. Okay, I don't wanna take a lot of your time, so let's do this quickly. Look at page 114. Energy is the ability to do work and change matter, okay? So it's obviously different, like I said, from matter because you cannot touch it, you cannot feel it, but you can see what it causes, okay? Whatever change it is, is it a chemical change, is it a physical change, energy is required, okay? The unit for it is joules, just like the unit for um, work, okay? Just go up to page 115 in the very top. It says one joule of energy is the energy required to do one joule of work. That's what you need to understand. Thus, pushing an object one meter with a force of one newton uses one joule of energy. That's the conversion rate. You know that because of the joules actually equals what? Kilograms times meters over seconds squared. And you don't need to know that right now, you just need to know that one joule of work is one joule of energy. And one joule of energy is one is pushing one newton of something, one meter, okay? Um, so going into the forms of energy, look what it says. First of all, there are two main forms of energy. There's the kinetic energy and the potential energy. And I'm gonna read this, these two paragraphs with you and then break it down so that we have a base, okay? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Like I said, kinetic means uh, motion. Make sure you know that. The simplest types of kinetic energy involve a whole object in motion, but some types of kinetic energy involve the motion of part of an object relative to the whole object, okay? So sometimes it's whole object, sometimes it's part of an object. But when you hear kinetic energy, Unless they tell you that it's different, you're thinking whole object. The whole object is moving, okay? Potential energy is the energy associated with the position of an object and the forces acting upon it. Potential energy can usually be converted into some form of kinetic energy to cause motion, okay? So potential energy is the one that's not moving yet, but the forces are acting on it and can start to move into kinetic energy. You will learn about the different types of kinetic energy and potential energy later in this chapter. Energy can also be divided into mechanical and non-mechanical. Okay, so there's two types of divisions, two types of categories. Mechanical energy is energy from motion or forces that affect a whole object. Several, ty several types of kinetic and potential energy contribute to mechanical energy and non-mechanical energy consists primarily of energy caused by the interval motion and forces at the atomic and molecular level. So what's going on with non-mechanical? That's at the at the smaller level, okay? So are you getting a full understanding of all four of those types of energy? No, it's an introduction of what you're going to learn. They're building a base, okay? So look at energy changes. For the properties of matter to change, energy must be either transferred from one object to another or changed from one form to another, okay? Energy always has to be either transferred or changed or moving, okay? Energy is there, even if you don't see it. Look what it says. When a bowling ball hits a bowling pin, kinetic energy is transferred from the ball to the pin. That's how it's gonna move, okay? Some chemical changes convert an object's thermal energy, which is heat, into chemical energy, okay? A flashlight converts chemical energy in a battery to radiant energy. There's all types of energy. Look at figure 5.1, energy transfers. Kinetic energy transferred, thermal energy to chemical energy, 
chemical energy to radiant energy, elastic potential energy to kinetic and sound energy, even sound energy, you guys. Okay. So you may not even know that something's being converted into energy, but then you hear a sound. Okay. Like if I hit my hand, what's happening? That some of the kinetic energy of this hand is being transferred into this hand to move it. But I did, but this, but watch, if I move this hand, this one didn't move as much as this one did. So where did the rest of the energy go? In one, in sound, two, in heat, because I'm, it's going to be warmer on my hand by a little bit. Okay. So energy is being changed in form all the time. And it may not necessarily be what we expect. Okay. We expect kinetic energy just to stay kinetic energy, right? That if I hit this, that it's just going to stay kinetic energy and make this move. But there is other energy formed right there, like I just told you. Okay, so there's different energy transfers. Look what it says. When somebody fires an arrow from a bow, elastic potential energy stored in the bowstring is transferred to the arrow as kinetic energy and to the air as sound energy, which is another form of kinetic energy. Okay, because sound does what? It moves. Okay. So then you have the conservation of energy, okay? And I'm not going to read through all of this, but what I, what I encourage you to do is, because I'm going to mention this on the next video next week, okay, to make sure that you understood it well, okay? But what I want you to do is read it out loud. Process it, okay? Make sure that you're processing as you go so that when you get to the end of section one, you can understand what all is going on, okay? And use the figures to help you. But basically, the law of conservation of energy says that you can neither create nor destroy energy. And then you're going to learn about the law of conservation of mass and energy to realize that mass and energy have a, a very connected relationship, which makes the atomic bomb possible, which is super cool. So have fun with that, okay? So now let's go into what you need to find in 5.2. In 5.2, there's not so many tamas, which is good. Like I told you, I'm not trying to make you spend all day on science, okay? Let me tell you the tamas. You need to do four sentences on translational kinetic energy, five sentences on the difference between translational and rotational kinetic energy, which is on page 118, because it's five sentences because when you need to tell me about rotational kinetic energy, and you also need to tell me the difference with transla translational, okay? Especially, let me just give you a hint, especially when it deals with circular motion, okay? There is a huge difference between circular motion, moving something in a circle, okay? And something moving in a rotation. That thing that's moving in a rotation is not moving in a circle. It could cause something to move in a circle, but it's not exactly moving in a circle. So it's just rotating, okay? And then you need to give me three sentences on the different types, different forms of kinetic energy, energy which is at the page. Hmm. at the last part of page 119 and the beginning of 120. And then do your section review plus the application. Application's easy as long as you understand the formula I'm about to teach you, okay? I'm not gonna go into much here, just that these translational and rotational is when the whole body of something is moving. That's kinetic. Remember what kinetic, the theory of kinetic, um, kinetic theory of matter means is that everything is always moving, okay? That's the base of what we're understanding. You can ignore the yellow box of kinetic energy and momentum. You can read it if you would like to. It's complex. Okay, so I decided to skip it as to not get too, too, too deep into that because we didn't go too deep into momentum to begin with. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at example 5.1. I'm not going to do the, um, the whole example for you on the board because it's not very, it's not necessary, but I do want to show you the formula that they are working with. Okay, this is the formula for kinetic energy energy. Um, look what it says. The amount of kinetic energy an object has equals the work required to bring it from a speed of zero to its current speed. Therefore, an object that is not moving has no kinetic energy. Okay. Obviously. So it's kinetic energy. That's E to the K at the bottom equals one half times mass times velocity. Okay not volume. This is velocity squared. Okay. That's the formula. Now I want you to focus on this formula because you're going to have to manipulate it 
at the end of the lesson and in the practices, okay? And I'm only gonna do one practice with you and then you need to do the other two. You need to show me two. No, you need to do the other one, pardon. I just, no, other two, two and three. Don't do number four. So I'm gonna do number one with you, but then you need to do two and three and not number four. But let's do the example first so that you understand how this works. Let's read through it. An athlete throws a 0.8 kilogram javelin. Okay, that's the thing in the in the picture. At a 25 meters per second velocity, okay? What is the kinetic energy of the javelin? Well, that's very easy. How do you set that up? E equals one half times, what is the mass? 0. 0.8 times 25 squared, okay? I don't want you to worry about the units right now, okay? But you should end up getting, after you do 25 squared times 0. 0.8 times 1 half, you should get 250. What is that? 250 joules, okay, in units there. I mean, I don't want you to worry about the kilograms, meter squared, second squared, etc. Okay? Now, you have to include this. Listen very carefully. You have to include this in your translational kinetic energy paragraph. Look at the paragraph right under the equation. According to this equation, kinetic energy is directly proportional to both the mass and the square of the speed. So if one increases, the other one increases. So if you increase mass, you increase kinetic energy, right? If you increase speed, you increase kinetic energy. But one of them is, is more impactful than the other. For example, doubling the mass of an object doubles its, in, in its kinetic energy. Doubling the object's speed multiplies the kinetic energy four times because it's two squared, it's speed squared. So which one has more influence? Look what it says. An important principle is that kinetic energy is much more affected by a change in speed than a change in mass. Double, okay? At least double. By the power of two, okay? Not just times two. To increase an object's kinetic energy, it is usually advisable to increase the speed instead of its mass, okay? Much more advisable to increase the speed instead of its mass which is another thing about the whole atomic bomb, okay? So, including your translational kinetic energy, how speed and mass affect the equation of kinetic energy. So here we go, look at number one on the practice. An object moving at 10 kilometers per hour has a kinetic energy of 10 joules. So let's just put that here. We have 10 joules. It's moving at 10 miles per hour, so we don't know the what. We don't know the mass, okay? But we can find it, can't we? And guys, on number two and three, I don't want you to invent, nor do I want you to put, I don't know. You need to call me if you don't know how to do these, okay? So what is the kinetic, look at the problem. What is the kinetic energy of the same object if it is moving at 20 kilometers per hour? Okay, so now it gives us a new speed, but it needs to know the new kinetic energy. Well, what do we need to do first? Find the mass. We don't know what the object is because we don't even know how much it weighs. Okay, so let's start manipulating. You could do one of two things. You can manipulate this to find mass first or you can manipulate it here. Since we already have it here, I'm going manip to manipulate it here. One half times 10 squared. Well, 10 squared is 100. One half of that is 50. So now we have 10 equals 50 m, right? So now we need to divide by 50, okay, which is 1 over 5, which is 0.2. So the mass of this object is 0.2. Okay, so now that we know the mass of the object, we want to know the new kinetic energy. So we go energy equals 1 half times 0.2 times velocity squared. The new velocity was 20 squared. Right? And I'm going to go do my calculator, which is my phone, <laughs> so I'll be right back, to find what we should get as our kinetic energy. So your answer should be 40. Okay? Your answer should be 40. So it was, so look at that. Look at the effect that speed has on the energy. Okay? The kinetic energy was 10 to begin with, and now it's four times it because you doubled the speed from 10 kilometers per hour to 20 kilometers per hour, which is exactly what that paragraph said it would do. 
okay? So there you go. The rest of it is up to you. Have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't turn it in saying you didn't understand unless you asked me.